Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel for another not necessarily a how I do but more of an explanation video of something I've spotted on the uh, on the various Facebook groups of late I have seen a few people asking about the difference between filters and washes uh, generally specifically pertaining to scale models so vehicles rather than figures uh, figures it gets a bit more confusing and I might cover some of that but we'll try and keep this relatively short now basic speaking a wash is a thin down paint which you use to pick out fine details so panel lines rivets that kind of thing whereas a filter is essentially again it's thin down paint but it's applied to alter the hue of the underlying paint. There are several different reasons to do this. Either your original paint isn't quite the right colour or the colour you were wanting or you wanted to change it slightly. Or you have a camo pattern that's got three very disparate colours and you wanted to tie it together a bit more. So I thought what I'd do is I'd break out a paint meal and show you the differences. So, venerable old 172 Airfix Spitfire paint mule. And I've primed the underside of the wings in white. And I've glossed uh, that wing. Trying to remember whether it's port, starboard, left, right, because it's upside down, back to front, all sorts, but never mind. Whereas this side I've left with the bare primer. Now because washes we want to flow into and around the detail, a gloss coat will help the wash do that. It will help it flow. Which is what I hope to demonstrate now. And I shall grab a random wash off the shelf, something that will... Oh, that'll do. Just a MIG brown enamel wash, give it a quick shake. And as these things get messy, we'll go back to mucky cutting mat rather than clean cutting mat. Now for this, we want a pointed brush so that we can get it into the details. You can see, no, actually, I'm using that one to paint figure at the moment, so we'll use that one. Same brush, I know, but hey, it's just me being silly. Pick up a little of the wash. And I might actually have to zoom you in a bit closer here so you can see what's going on. There we are. And if I try and keep that roughly where it is, I just... Hopefully I've got a decent finish. Yeah. And we can watch as the wash runs along the various panel lines get a bit more on and we can see it do its thing and once we let it dry again we don't want too much on the brush I won't do the whole wing you just soon get the theory and the figure out. But, you know, this is what washes are for. To pick out these are as I'm guessing probably all of you know. It's a uh, fairly basic and uh, well-known trick. It's one of those things that pretty much everyone does on pretty much every model is a wash of some description. Now I'm just looking for my brush cleaning bottle. Here we go. Let's just 
I enjoy joy as it's enamel, so it's been an absolute pig to get out of the brush. There we go. This pot of clean will get the acrylics and the lacquers out of the brush really easy. This there's no white spirit in it, so it doesn't like enamels very much. So that's basically what a wash does. As you can see where I put it, it's run into the panel lines. Oh, I'll just grab a comb one and clean it up a bit first so you can see. Better, better, better. Put my teeth in and what makes sense. Right. Obviously normally you'd wait for it to dry before cleaning off the excess, but hey. People already complain my videos are too long and waffly, so if I sit here and let the wash dry. <laughs> but you can see what the wash has done, it's picked out the lines. Now let's move over to a filter, for which we will need, in this case, what I prefer to use is an oil paint. And we need some kind of receptacle. Let's grab a receptacle. Oh. There we go, there's one. I should have had one of these ready really if I was professional, but you know. Oh, I'm just a bumbler who bumbles my way through these things, making it up as I go. Oh, right, I shall zoom you back out so you can see actually what I'm doing. Here we have our paint receptacle. Oil paint, Windsor & Newton Tierra Verde. Or green earth, I guess that probably is. And we won't need much. I've really not got any of the tools I need to hand, have I? Right. So we just grab a cocktail stick. And pop a little bit of paint. Well, we'll leave it on the cocktail stick. Always remembering to do, always remembering to do your oils up nice and tight. Otherwise, they tend to leak all the oil out and go nasty. All right, now to thin the oil paint, you can use various things. I think uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner works. They're all the turpenoids, turpentines, low odor solvents, all this kind of thing. I'm old fashioned, bog standard white spirit in the UK or mineral spirits in America and it's in a childproof thing pop the lid to one side for now grab my little pipette make sure it's not got anything not that I'm overly worried about contaminating the white spirit and a filter is normally about 5 to 10 percent, maybe 15 percent paint to thinner. Bit difficult to judge when using oil paints and what have you, but we can always add more if we want. Right, pop that out of the way. Now give that a good stir up. He says, hoping that it's going to work. There we go. Uh, maybe a stronger colour might have been a better idea, but you never know. It might work. Now, as I said, filter, you're applying it over, not necessarily over your base paint, but you can apply it over a matte coat. pretty much anything like that we don't what you don't want is a satiny or gloss finish on it because then it will do what the wash just did which is not necessarily what we want it to do and yep yeah, this is rather thin but the filter is generally applied all over to change the tonal hue variant whatever you want to call it let's just go with change the color of the base paint underneath it 
just ever so slightly. Oh, we're not talking about painting something purple and then putting a green filter on it and turning it green, but in this case we're just oh, it's settling out already. There we go. Let's get some actual paint in it. <laughs> What you want to make sure you do with the filter is that you don't leave any puddles because when it dries they will show badly and you literally apply it all over the AU you want to change the hue of. Now I'm fully aware that with this being white and fairly well lit this probably isn't going to show too well and it will actually show more once it's dried which can take a while so you don't want to be sitting around while I do this while I wait for it to dry and waffle for an hour or two but that's basically it now I'm just making sure I don't leave any big puddles or patches of colour. Now if I zoom in we should get rid of some of the white out from the light. If I bring us in nice and close you can you might be able to pick out the colour difference where I've applied the green. You can see we've got a slight greenish tinge on that wing. So if you wanted to have a stronger effect you can either add more layers as it dries or you can mix it slightly thicker. I'd, I'd prefer to err on the side of caution and to just build the colour up as we want to change it. And that on a scale model is the difference between a wash and a filter. They can basically be the same product. I could have uh, taken the enamel wash and thin that further and done exactly the same thing with that. I just chose to use oil because that's what I make filters from. So, oh, try not to get the big old melon in the shot. Now when it comes to figure painting there is um, different sort of terminologies, phrases, terms of and techniques. Um, uh, similar effects but a wash is a wash wherever you use it, however you use it. A glaze is similar to a filter as is uh, technically they're called shades but I'd, I'd say the Citadel shades or washes are part way between a wash and a filter. And I'll show you what I mean by that because this was, let's move that out of the way and move that back in, uh, whichever way up it goes, that way will do. The base paint on this was considerably lighter, this is just a rucksack for a figure I'm painting at the moment. But I've applied two coats of the Agrax Earthshade and the colour difference is showing up a lot stronger on camera than it actually is. As you can see it's, it's darkened the main paint but it's also picked out all the detail as well. And that was just applied all over. Now if I wanted a stronger effect I could apply it just in the folds and into the detail which is what I will be doing with the coat and the jeans. Unfortunately the wash I used on the jeans is glossy so it's probably, yeah, it's, well it's doing weird things to the camera screen, whether it's doing it to the camera I don't know. But as we can see from the coat, ugh, <laughs> it's really not liking those jeans. Um, as I say that's had one coat of a, a Citadel shade on it as well which has changed the base colour and it's gone into the sunken detail and picked it all out so on figures 
it's a little different but on tanks and planes the basic theory applies with the difference between a filter and a wash so I hope that's cleared everything up for people let me just zoom us back out again so we're not just staring at the centre of the cutting mat and I hope it's uh, another useful addition to my explanations videos so if you've enjoyed it give us a thumbs up leave us leave us a comment down there somewhere if there's anything you'd like to see explained or how I do or anything like that just let me know I'll see what I can do but anyway enjoy your modeling have fun rock on peace out Bye-bye.